talk an awful lot about fertility here at Ag PhD. The reason why is because if you have better fertility, you should have better yields and hopefully more profit. Well, we talk a lot about NP and K, we talk about the micronutrients, the secondary nutrients, things like sulfur, calcium, magnesium, but rarely do we talk about a nutrient like molybdenum that Yes, it's considered a micronutrient, but there aren't even common tests that are used for that. In fact, I would say most farmers in the United States have never tested their soil for molybdenum. Well, the reason why we're talking about it today is it is important, especially if you start going for higher yields and you're up to levels where you're getting 80 bushel beans and maybe 280 bushel corn, you go, all right, what's missing? What else could there possibly be? It may be molybdenum. So how do you manage a nutrient that you haven't even been measuring for? Well, the first step is to get out and do a test and measure. I would suggest just even doing one. Do one test in one field and see what you've got. Now you at least have an idea of, hey, it's non-detectable on my test because honestly, that's what we found on some of our fields that it was just at a non-detectable level. Well, if you can't even detect any out in your field, you know that there's a pretty good chance getting a little bit out there is going to be better than nothing. And there are a lot of different ways to apply molybdenum, and there are certain times to apply molybdenum on your farm, and that's what we want to talk about today. Yep, but before we do, just understand this is an important nutrient in plants, especially like soybeans. It really helps with nodulation. Alfalfa, you can see excessive leaf drop when you don't have adequate levels of moly. Uh, I'm just calling it moly for short, by the way, here instead of molybdenum. But the other thing is when you've got low pH soil, you can get tie up with iron and aluminum. So for many years, people would talk about, well, hey, if I just have my pH around six and a half, maybe seven, my molybdenum levels will be better. Well, yes, they should be better theoretically, but if you don't even have any in your soil, like we found on our farm, we can't even find any, that's probably not good. So what we're looking at, and you can certainly do some seed treatment with molybdenum. The concern there is if you get very much at all, it can hurt seed germination. So you have to be super careful. In addition, this is a leachable nutrient. So let's say you want to go broadcast it out there. Well, you can do that, and we're going to do some of that going into this next year on our own farm. I'm excited about that. I think we'll get some response. But let's say you have sandy soil and heavy rainfall. Well, for our farm, we don't. We have heavy soil and no rainfall or very little rainfall, so I'm not worried about leaching. Where I'm going with this is if you have sand and lots of rain, um, molybdenum might not stay around a real long time. So then you have to look at other methods. How are you going to spoon feed this particular nutrient? Well, with molybdenum or molly, you can certainly do some foliar feeding with that and throughout the season. We, we talk to farmers across the country that are starting to do just that, putting multiple applications of molybdenum on in crop. But I'll be honest with you, it's such a small percentage of farmers out there that are beginning to do this that we don't have this huge volume of data yet. It's one of those things that you can try a little bit on your farm and use this as one of the tests that you're doing this year, maybe on one field or on a couple of fields to see what kind of impact it could have for you. Molly does serve some really important functions within the plant. And when we see fields that have very poor nodulation, sometimes Molly could be one of those factors that, that could be to blame. Also, Molly is very essential for converting nitrates into the amino acids that your plants use. So when we think about nitrogen and how it works in the soil and into the plant, molly is another one of those factors that's going to be really important. All right, here is our suggestion for you. At least run a couple tests on your farm in some of your fields, maybe your best ground and your worst ground, I don't know, just run a couple of tests. These are expensive soil tests to do, and you're going to have to run them separately, most likely, depending on your lab. But then in addition to that, pull at least a few tissue samples as you go throughout the season and just see what you're seeing for result, not only in soybeans and alfalfa like we talked about today, but in maybe some of your other crops as well. If you are seeing low levels either in the soil or in the plant tissue, Try some of these methods we're talking about, maybe a little bit broadcast, maybe a little bit on the seed, maybe some foliar feeding. Just run some trials because this could be essential for your farm. Well, chances are Molly is one of those nutrients you really haven't concerned yourself with, but you may have read about a little bit and got some curiosity around. Take a look at Molly on your farm this year, see if it makes a difference for you. One thing I know will make a difference is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to do it coming up later in the show.